Hello and welcome to Workshop Studios. So, <laughs> what are we doing here today? Well, it turns out that uh, somebody did a bad job on the drywall mudding and made a mess. Oh, that was me 25 years ago. So, I'm in here in this particular room. Do a quick scan here. You can see. All empty, cleared out. I'm in here tearing off old drywall mud and tape. Uh, and then sanding it flat. See here, this there was a joint here and I ended up putting way too much mud on it and then tape over the top of that and mud over the top of that and it made a big lump in the wall. <clears throat> you can sort of see one here. If I do this on the wall, maybe I can get the shadow to... Yeah, I can't quite see it there. But right here, there's a lump. This one isn't too bad, but I've already done a whole bunch of these. And so I tried a couple of different techniques. Hopefully you never have to do this, but um, one technique is to, is to go down and just sand through it all using a rotary sander right there, like that. <clears throat> but that does take a while. So then I ended up going to a second way and that is using a scraper, paint scraper, looks like this, and scraping it off, making a big mess, as you can see down here, paper, and that's cleaned up after several cleanups there. <clears throat> but then I also added a third technique, and that is to use just a plain old utility knife. Cut through it, and it, and it ends up being able to peel through the paper. Let me show you an example up here. Here's, here it is sanded down and you can see the joint. Oops, got to point at it. You can see the joint here. And what I've ended up doing is taking all the paper off all the way along here. And now I'm at this point. And now you can see there's this sort of lumpy area here. And so what I'm doing is just taking the, the drywall knife and getting up underneath the paper and kind of just prying it. That works pretty good. If I I've got to do it one-handed here, so this isn't as good as I have been doing. But maybe you can see what I'm doing, is just sort of peeling it up like that. And once I get a little edge going, then sometimes I can grab it. Oops, that one didn't do it. Um, like right here, you can see a chunk of this is going to come off. I'll try and do it slowly so you can see. So that's paper, or that's... Um, drywall mud, tape, paper tape, and paint on top. And I'm just peeling it all right off of there. Kind of slow. So I can get most of it. It's certainly the easiest way to do this, it turns out. There, that chunk came off. So you can actually see the paint. That's just paint right there that I'm flicking on right there. And then this is the paper part. So I'm ending up doing that using the scraper after it gets down to like these chunks um, so that it gets close. And then I use a sander to finish it off. And then what I'll come back to is, is um, fill in some of these with new drywall mud, sand it down again. Now I'm not gonna put tape on these, which is a big no-no in, in the world of drywall because it's liable to um, have a crack form there, but I just don't have that. So let me tell you why this happened. We'll just stay here. So the reason this happened was because I'm lousy at drywall um, and mudding and all that, but that's... <laughs> but on top of that, this room ended up being the last room in a very large basement where we were um, putting sheetrock up, both here and on the ceilings. And again, this was 25 years ago. And this being the last room, I had hauled so much sheetrock that I was so sick and tired of hauling sheetrock from the local big box store that I started, I had a ton of these little pieces left over. So this is a good example. There's a piece right there, like that. And so I ended up making a big jigsaw puzzle in this room. I used some full sheets, but a lot of it was pieces. And um, when you have a piece, that means you don't have that nice edge that drywall has a lot of times where it's depressed down on either side and it gives you room to put tape down, a little bit of mud, tape, and then more mud on top, and then you sand it flat across them. This one is level all the way across like this, and so there's no place, no depression there where you can put stuff and not have a lump. 
Well, I ended up just going ahead and taping everything and putting big lumps of drywall. Well, it made the, the whole room look kind of, well, lumpy. I'll show you over here. This is another good example. Maybe you can see some of this where I've pieced it together. Now, I've already worked on this part of the wall. So I've already um, peeled that tape off, sanded it. Um, but you can see maybe right here, there's, there's a joint you can see. And of course you can see this joint probably all the way along in here. So that's why it happened, is that whenever you join two pieces of drywall and don't have that depression, you, have, um, you don't have any place to put the tape and not have a big lump. I think some people go ahead and peel the paper back. So in a place like this where there's a joint, they take and cut along on the drywall paper itself, cut down and peel off a layer of paper and maybe a little bit of drywall, and then you could tape that and not have a big lump, but I didn't do that. So I'll bring you back after I get a little farther. And, uh, you can see what I've done, that I'm working that spot. Now what I'm gonna do is get that down, sand it smooth, and then I'm gonna put a coat of kills, the primer kills on it, and that sort of seals it up, and then I can put some drywall mud on it. And then I can get to painting. So you can see a little better now, up in here, what, what I was doing was, that's the joint along in there. And I was going ahead and peeling that paper back and then scraping as much of the drywall off as I could with the scraper and then sand it flat so that we've got a nice flat area out there. <clears throat> There's one last spot I might get, which is right here, but you can't see it as well as I can. There's still kind of a lump there, so I'm gonna work on that. But I won't bore you with it. And there it is with a coat of Kills Primer on it. And uh, it's looking much better, a lot flatter on the, on the wall. And here it is with the first coat of blue on. You can still see the outline of where we fixed the wall, but hopefully the next coat of blue will cover that right up. And here are some of the other areas that did the same thing to you can really spot them very easily through the first coat of blue. Well, here's the next day, and the paint has dried, and you can just see a, a little bit of the uh, of the area, but it's faded in pretty nicely. And here's some more of it over here. I know it looks like just a blank wall, but. Um, that's the spot right there that was repaired. And then over here, you can see just slightly dark, but not nearly as much as yesterday when it was wet still. So another coat and we'll see how that looks. And here is the wall all done. So this is where we were tearing it all to pieces and it looks pretty good. Now, if you look across the wall, Sometimes you can see, I don't think you can on video, but sometimes you can see a little bit of, of undulations, but uh, there's a little bit right here I can see. You probably can't, but it turned out great. So I think well worth uh, taking the time to get that wall fixed. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Sure helps out the channel and me too. Appreciate it. See you on the next video. Bye.